is live uh, August 25th, I believe. No. no. No, like second or third. Okay. Well, it's right there on your screen. The 24th. Yeah, that shows you how out of it I am. August 24th, 2003. That's when we're live, and it's today. Thank you for joining us. This show is sponsored, as always, by Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. And uh, our song today, uh, This Is Not America, I wanted to, uh, de to dedicate to our pal, Judge Roy Moore, and all of his fellow theocrats out in Alabama who <laughs> think that we ought to be this big uh, sort of a Christian theocracy. Uh, well, that's not America, my friends. And we're going to be talking about that quite a lot today. But uh, uh, with the announcements to start with, um, we have uh, the, the ACA, like I said, uh, has a uh, our weekly meetings. There we are, ten thirty. I really, I get off for a weekend. I'm rusty. <laughs> you know, I just had this wonderful nice day off. I get back and I'm like, ooh, okay, I'll just get right in the groove, and I don't. No, no, I just, I'm just, I'm hopeless. <laughs> anyway, uh, bagel shop meetings are uh, uh, ten thirty every Sunday morning. <clears throat> Hot jumbo bagels, three hundred seven West Fifth Street, downtown between Guadalupe and Lavaca. Except for the first Sunday of each month when we have our lecture series in the Mayor Room of the Austin History Center at 9th in Guadalupe, and uh, our, our next month's speaker, our speaker for September, will be Jeff D., uh, whom you'll remember, uh, he used to be the host of this program, and now he hosts the Nonprofits Internet Radio Show, and he'll be talking on the subject of transhumanism, which should be very interesting, uh, certainly uh, uh, definitely a pet, uh, pet uh, interest of his, and um, <clears throat> something that I've been uh, taking a lot of interest in myself lately, and I believe October there is not going to be a guest speaker. We're, inst we're, st we're going to have some group meeting of that some sort. Kind of a business group-wide yeah. meeting. Let's talk about the about, uh, budget next year and like... Uh, yeah, budget, what we're going to be doing, funds, direction, stuff, stuff like, like that. that. Yeah. And then we have, uh, I, I believe we have November and December speakers already lined up. Yes, so. we do. <clears throat> so that's uh, looking good for that. But uh, so, and next Sunday will be uh, first Sunday in September. No, it won't. It won't? Next Sunday is the 31st. 31st. Oh, this is one of those wacky fi uh, five Sunday. Oh, yep, five oh, Sunday. Okay. Oh, cool. Uh -huh. All right. So then two more weeks, we get to talk here from Jeff D., and uh, it'll be good all the same. So that's that for our uh, daytime meetings, our Sunday uh, meetings. Uh, but we also have quite a number of events that go on during the week. And uh, Godless Gamers is one of those. It's Monday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. at the home of Russell and Virginia Glasser. And we also have ACA Happy Hour which is a Thursday evening uh, little get-together, which is at Antonio's Tex-Mex uh, near the intersection of Highway 183 and I-35. And just uh, wander in and look for uh, the really loud, boisterous table with, uh, um, I think, the Darwin Fish. Uh, Keith puts his Darwin Fish sign yes. up there to so identify us. So people trickle in all evening long. It starts roughly 7.30, but people go in and out. <clears throat> so there's no real set time for that. Okay, so uh, Godless Gamers, uh, big, uh the uh, happy hour and uh, oh yes, nonprofits. Now, let's not, lest, lest we forget our sister show on the internet, internet radio show, <clears throat> the nonprofits, which is every other Saturday at the atheistnetwork.com website, or you can just go directly to our website, atheist-community.org, visit the radio show page, and uh, Russell has helpfully provided a direct link to the live feed uh, for that. It's an MP3 stream. Uh, but if you go to the atheistnetwork.com website, there is an interactive chat room feature uh, that they like people to uh, to uh, plug into and interact with the program. There's uh, and and sometimes you know they'll people will bring stuff up in the chat room and they'll uh, they'll talk back. And that's uh, Jeff D is the host of that show, the Nonprofits, uh, which is uh, two o'clock in the afternoons. As I said, every other Saturday, uh, Russell Glasser is also part of that. Vic Farrow. The next episode of that will be this coming Saturday. And uh, you can also listen to past episodes, like the last half dozen or dozen or so. I'm not sure how many Russell keeps up there. But you can listen to those on our website at the radio show page, like I just mentioned to you. So that's that. Uh, also, University Atheists and Agnostics. Um, the fall semester is getting uh, cranked up, uh, I, so I assume that before too long we'll know a little something about uh, what UAA are doing. This is a, a registered EG student organization started up about a year ago by Charles Tabney and his like-minded minions uh, at UT, and uh, they're going to, I think, get it, uh, get it started up here for the fall. So as soon as we know when the uh, meeting times and the meeting room is, we'll let you know. But if you are a UT student or faculty member, 
then you should fire off an email to uaa at mail.utexas.edu, and Charles will get back to you with uh, whatever information he has on the group. So the successful uh, UT student and faculty atheist organization, first one that I know of, and so we're real proud of the gang for that. So I think that just about... Uh, does it for those announcements, uh, just the usual greeting stuff. What have I left okay. out? Uh, okay. I don't think anything special. Okay. However, yes. uh, we are having a weekly thing this week, uh, possibly. We were just talking about it this morning. Hmm. Nothing is set in stone, so keep it on the email list. But this Wednesday, hmm. the 27th, is the closest that Mars has ever been to Earth in basically recorded history. Oh, that's right. And yeah. it's the closest it will be in for another 200 and some odd years. Oh. Uh, me and a couple people plan on possibly getting out somewhere, possibly to Mansfield Dam or something like that, with a couple telescopes <laughs> and uh, having a little ACA shindig down there. Mm -hmm. um, little at Mars and yeah, a little and star yeah. party. Fun. And uh, great. Go see some of the some of the sights mm -hmm. of the sky. Yeah. So that's we're thinking about Friday night for that, but nothing's set in stone yet. So just keep an eye out for it. Yeah. So okay. Should be fun. Cool. That is kind of neat. All right. So then uh, then that does do it for the regular announcements. So thanks a lot. And over to. You for the news, right? Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, boy, before we start that, let me go ahead and do this because okay. I don't want to get uh, off topic once we get the ball rolling uh, here. Um, like I said, I uh, took the took the weekend off last time, uh, but apparently you guys had. Um, I understand it was a great show. Yeah. Uh, you guys had some creationist caller that Russell was talking to. Several of them. Uh, so, wow. <laughs> they just must have. <laughs> they just so came out of woodwork get, last week. Yeah, you just uh, yeah. Like, it all happens on one day sometimes. Yeah. You know, just uh, well, one call kind of gets the ball rolling. Yeah. There, so. Yeah. But apparently, Russell told me today at the bagel shop that uh, one of the guys he talked to, he gave uh, a, a, a URL to. Uh, I guess the, the discussion must have been Michael Behe. Yep, and he came his, up. his famous, um, you know, irreducible complexity stuff. Yep. And uh, Russell wanted to send this guy to some website that gave an example. Like, Behe's apparently big example is the, um, the, mouse, the mouse trap, trap that yeah. can't be reduced. And, yeah. and this website shows, uh, gives an example of a reducibly complex mouse trap. And it kind of punctures that argument from Behe. But uh, there, I guess that's it right there at the bottom of your screen. Russell uh, said, told me that he gave the guy the wrong URL, and this is the right one. Uh, udel.edu slash uh, tilde, little tilde sign that we don't know how to make on this character generator. Tilde McDonald slash mousetrap.html. And uh, I, I looked over it. I didn't get a chance to read it in detail, but apparently it's got all kinds of like Java animations and stuff. Okay. Um, that's funny. So, so that's it. We'll leave that up for like a few seconds, just so that people can copy it down uh, at their leisure. And so that's all I wanted to uh, deal with before. Okay. Doing that. So now we can go to news. <laughs> While we litter the room. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. First one, an inspirational story. Huh. Uh, this is uh, Ethel Farbinger. Mm -hmm. uh, and who says, in one month, my husband died of emphysema, and then my mother passed away. Well, that's real inspirational there. Huh? <laughs> Somehow I just couldn't cope with the loss of these two people who were dearest to me in the whole world. Se suicide seemed like the only way out. Oh. Uh, overwhelmed by despair, Farbringer planned to stab herself in the heart and bring it all to an end. Ow. That's but then a miracle happened. I locked myself in the bathroom at my school, and I had a knife in my hand, she recalls. But before I could actually commit the act, a brilliant light suddenly filled the room, and I saw an image of St. Padre Pio in my toilet. But, uh, he uh, smiled uh, up at me. Uh, actually, did this come from The Onion or what? Where did... <laughs> no, this is not The Onion. Okay. I saw this. Well, yeah. I saw it in a couple different sites. Oh, okay. <laughs> he smiled up at me and gently explained how taking my life would cause more problems than it would solve... Many people would be greatly saddened by your death, he said. From you the must... toilet, he said these Apparently, things. Apparently, yes. Well, that's... Wow. Um, well. <laughs> he, you know, everybody's got their venue. Eh, um, eh. You must think of them yeah. and, and the good work you still have yet to do here on Earth and blah, 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 blah. When the image disappeared, I sat down before and sobbed for almost an hour. But when what? the tears stopped, I felt a tremendous sense of relief, as if God had removed the weight of the world from my shoulders. Well, that usually, you know, after a good sit down on the toilet, that is what you're <laughs> supposed to feel, is a tremendous sense of relief. But, uh... Yep. So... Padre uh, P. Uh, uh, oh. Yes, I know. Insert um, joke here. Yeah. So, saved her from suicide by <laughs> making an appearance from the toilet. 
So. Okay, this is just silly. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's a fun way to start. Yeah. So, well, I heard religion was crap, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, you know, it's nice that she didn't kill herself, but my goodness, of course. I mean, if you're so far gone that you're like. You know, you're 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 gonna Power do the deed the and saints then, in the toilet. Well, and then you like yeah, you experience a vision from the commode. You know, I mean, <laughs> that just is, is I I question just you know your mental stability in yeah. so many very way, you know, various ways. It's uh, uh, um, well, okay. Next one, why not? Next, you're gonna have like believers are gonna be thronging to that toilet stall and <laughs> burning know. their candles and yeah, you know. lighting candles around the toilet and well, might improve the situation. Uh, well, so. Uh, there's that. Okay. Put some little incense in there. <laughs> Astrology. Bunk. Uh, officially. Think? Officially, no. Mm. Um, good news for rational, level-headed Virgoans everywhere. Mm. Just as you might have predicted, scientists have found astrology to be rubbish. Its central claim that our human characteristics are molded by the influence of the sun, moon, and planets at the time of our birth appears to have been debunked once and for all beyond doubt by the most thorough scientific study ever made into it. No. For several decades. Now, do we think this will change a damn thing? No. 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 So, you know. But again, it's, it's always right. something that you could reference people back to. Right. When they say, well, I'm just a Leo. <laughs> um, for several decades, researchers tracked more than 2,000 people, most of them born within minutes of each other. Mm -hmm. According to astrology, the subject should have had very similar traits. The babies were originally recruited as part of a medical study uh, begun in London in 1958 mm -hmm. into how the circumstances of birth can affect future health. More than 2,000 babies born in early March that year were registered and their development monitored re at regular intervals. Researchers looked at more than 100 uh, different characteristics, including occupation, anxiety levels, marital status, and so on, mm -hmm. uh, all of which astrologers claim to be gauged by birth charts. Or from birth charts. Yeah, theoretically, if this stuff was true, right? Exactly. Everybody born on, you know, January 1st, 1960. Yeah, at 364 in the afternoon. Should have. Exactly the same traits. Yeah, they should have yeah. the same lives. They should each each be successful in their careers. Exactly. You know, in, in exactly should the, all same be the same way. Yeah. Yeah, they should have, so. you know, the same ideas about stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> However, the scientists failed to find any evidence of similarities be between the time twins. Mm. They report in the current issue of Journal of Consciousness Studies, the test conditions could hardly have been more conducive to success, but the results are uniformly negative. Mm. So, yeah. it be bunk. Right. Um, and they also go back to <coughs> other studies that have been done here, where they gave all these astrologers, here's the birth times and dates of mm -hmm. you know a specific person, and here's, you know, Ten different people. Which one is it? Mm -hmm. And even when they had all the information, it's no better than chance. Yeah, just it's, it's just pure get, guesswork. Couldn't give a better than guesswork. Exactly. Uh, yeah, there was no more successful was, yeah. than pure guesswork. Right. So, but again, so you, know, you can be an astrologer too. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, but you have to remember that uh, you know the, all the all of these religious ideas, right? Just whether it's mainstream religion or whether it's stuff like astrology yeah. or going to get your palm read or whatever. Pseudoscience. Well, like. you know, it's it's just it you know it's just getting stroked, right? I mean, that's what it's for. It's people oh, yeah. who just have these problems. Uh, they're just unhappy with this, that, or the other thing, and so they want to be uh, they want to go to someone whom they can look at as an authority figure who will tell them nice, warm, sugary, yeah. comfort things yeah. and that's what it's all for you know? yeah and, um, and a lot of these astrology you know you have your chart done and they tell you all about yourself yeah it's a lot of stuff that people believe about themselves they want to hear sure you know I mean certain people yeah. I mean there are just certain traits that everybody wants everyone just, wants to be liked yeah but just, nobody's liked as much as they want to be mm -hmm. so you know they kind of throw that in there and you know spice it up a little bit and there you go it's just like a psychic who does a cold reading on you yeah Right, yeah. and you remember the hits, you forget the misses. It's called confirmation bias. Yeah, yeah. So, so. yeah, well. Yeah. So astrology complete bunk yeah. as always. All right. So, so. All right. But will it go away? What do you think? Unlikely, hmm. unlikely. But yeah. we can always hope. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, next one. Less than two days old, a Johnson County <coughs> baby died in her home of a staph infection, yeah. and her parents never called a doctor. Investigators have to decide whether the parents broke the law. That's not even decided yet. 
Uh, the well, parents, should be. I mean, they should be. Yeah, according to us. But there's well, no, there's there's a legal precedent. I mean, there there has uh, there's been at least one. Not st- in this place. Okay. Uh, the parents of the little girl say their religious convictions kept them from getting their daughter medical care. Similar acts have landed other parents uh, have landed parents in other states in court. There you go. But they may, that may not happen here. A report from the Johnson County Sheriff's Department says the church is called the General Assembly of Church, the General Assembly, and Church of the Firstborn. It's loaded. It's located in Morgantown. Um, Which uh, what's, I'm not what's too state sure exactly what state that is even. Huh. Um, but anyway, uh, elders from the church gathered to pray for the infant when she got sick. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, it was born at home with a uh, uh, with a midwife. Okay. Um, it had some problems when it was born with the umbil- with the umbilical cord and such. Uh, they got over all of that, but the next day, Rihanna, the baby, um, developed breathing problems. Her parents called church elders to pray, but they didn't call a doctor. Rihanna died early Tuesday morning of a staph infection. Um, but the sheriff's department, along with Johnson County prosecutors, aren't sure Indiana law allows them to prosecute the Schmitz. Uh, they're still going to look into it, but uh, how there's, could it not? There's case law here in Indiana where similar situations have been tried, and due to religious beliefs, there were no criminal charges. See, that's crazy. So that's something I mean, that should change. Yeah, I mean, because what you have here, this again, these are religious people getting special entitlements because they're religious. Yeah. Apparently, if you're religious, you can neglect to care for your child. Exactly. And it's cool. Yeah. You know, the state's like, yeah. oh well, oh you neglected, to, you know, you neglected your child for religious reasons. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. You know, I guess if you, if your, you did, your religious beliefs are absolutely perfectly fine, but the yeah. minute they hurt somebody else, it's a crime. That's not that's not okay anymore. All it's right. not something that's just going to fly. I, don't know. I mean, it's a staph infection. A shot of penicillin would have fixed it. Yeah, I mean, it's easily. These so, are, but you, you see this kind of thing all the time. And yeah. again, it's this is it, it, it is insane to me the sort of yeah. the the hoops that these folks will, will jump through. Okay, yeah. to sort of protect their religious meme. Yeah. You know, even at the expense of you know someone's life, like yeah. even even one of their own children. Yeah. Because yeah. you know they it, you look at these cases and you say to yourself, all right, well. You know, here here is a situation we can point to and say, was were the parents' beliefs in prayer validated or were they invalidated in the efficacy of prayer? Were they validated yeah. or invalidated? Was, was their belief that praying yeah. to God to heal their baby was you know was that shown to be true or was it shown not to be true? Yeah. Okay, I would argue that it was shown not to be true. But what is crazy is that even in a situation like like this. Okay, when like a child dies, you know that what they will do in response to this is they will say something like, "Oh, we must have not been praying hard enough." Yeah. Or, or it know. was just God's will. Yeah. And, so, you know, which yeah. is and people and we get the call every now and then on the show saying, "Why do we bother to do the show?" Some people yeah. have religious beliefs. Some people don't. Why can't we all just get along? It's it's not causing a problem. Mm-hmm. It's causing a problem. It caused when a problem for that little die. Yeah. Caused when a problem children for children die. What's her name? Rihanna. Because your wacko beliefs yeah. stop you from getting doctor's advice. Mm-hmm. That's where we have a problem, and we're not just going to sit back and say, "Oh well, you have your beliefs, we do ours, and it's all mm-hmm. kind of works out in the end." No, it doesn't. No. Not for these people. Yeah. Well, religious belief. Not for the baby. Yeah. yeah. Religious belief left unchecked results in this yeah. so so that is one of the reasons why we do this show yeah so so all right okay gee gee cheer us up ashley okay <laughs> once next oh. week okay <laughs> <laughs> oh, it ain't happening this coming. one. Oh well <laughs> um i don't know how many people were here remember the name john uh gogan I'm not sure. Is it Gilgan or Gilgan or Gilhan or Gilgan? Yeah, I'm not sure. Gagan. He is, he's basically one of the former priests uh, right. in the Boston Archdiocese who was convicted of child molestation. He and Shanley were like the first two guys, right? Uh, I believe the, the so, yes. I mean, light, right? he just has lots and lots and lots of uh, people behind him. Mm-hmm. Uh, more than 130 people have claimed sexual abuse against them. Cripes. So that's 130 people against this one person. Uh, he got sent to jail, mm-hmm. and on Saturday, actually just, it appears just yesterday, oh. um, he was actually killed. 
Damn. They they generally kept them kept them away from the general population. Sure. Um, just because you know in, in prison child molesters are not treated too kindly. Yeah. And uh, well, what do most violent offenders have in their pasts? Exactly. <laughs> I exactly. mean, what, how did yeah, they? they what were their children there? Were their growing up so, experiences? Yeah. They were. So uh, so yeah, and this I mean he had to have some <coughs> contact with other other yeah. inmates at certain times, and uh, and one of them actually did kill him. Good grief. So Thanks. so yep. Yeah. You know, I, I can't I, bring myself to really feel too bad about that. Exactly. You know? I mean, it's it's I mean, hardly something where we want to make it look like, you know, ha ha, yeah. we're glad. No, That's I mean, certainly, it's just... certainly, obviously not the case. No. But it's, it's also, on the other hand, hard to really feel sorry for him. It's just, oh well, yeah. you know, it's just, a, you know, yeah. poetic justice or however you yeah. want to put it. I mean, yeah. it's it's just the fate of those, you after, know... What... After abusing 130, possibly more kids. Well, you know, it's, it's exactly the same fate that uh, Jeffrey Dahmer suffered. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what he did, and uh, he, he was killed in prison. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... It's just, I guess, sort of what goes around comes around, as yeah. it were. Yeah. So. Well, it's a, it's a, it's an ugly, nasty, sordid ending to an ugly, nasty, sordid tale. You know, it's it's yeah. this this whole horrible crisis and scandal has been a lose lose situation for everyone involved. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can't make this situation better. <clears throat> yeah. You can make it tolerable. You can work to improve things and yeah. to make sure it doesn't happen again. But this isn't something so. that you fix. No. So. So, and as Jeff on the radio show points out every now and then, um, it, it's not something that goes away. It's not something that's over. <laughs> it's not something that you can that you should forget about and say, well, uh -uh. you know, they've gone to jail, and so everything is now you know equal. <clears throat> uh, this was you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kids. Yeah. And I mean, it was a essentially a conspiracy within within the higher powers of the church to well, keep it, it went under wraps. right up to the top. Exactly to you keep know, it under I mean, wraps. I mean, the Vatican knew that this problem. Yeah. I don't know how much to the extent they knew that uh, it, how widespread it was. Yeah, I'm but sure, but somebody it. knew quite a lot because yeah. um, you know their their documents have come to light. I think they're as, as much as 20 years old. Yeah. Uh, where the Vatican is saying, you know, let's let's not tell people. Okay, we've got these priests who are a problem, but let's just kind of keep it under our our hats. Yeah. For now, and we'll deal with it internally somehow. Yeah. Which I guess is shuffle guys around. Exactly, which apparently <laughs> hasn't fixed the problem. <laughs> no. Well. So. <laughs> yeah. so again, just uh, just there, there's yeah, just ugly and sorted all the way around, yeah. and just yeah. doesn't surprise me that this is how. Exactly. Yeah. You know, exactly. Those people were not going to be treated very kindly. No. So. so. But again, I can't. I can't bring myself to be too broken up about it. it it's yeah. not a thing you cheer. It's just a thing you sort of you look at and you go. Yeah. Well, there you are. You yeah. Know. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, I All guess right. to the big one this week, yep. right? Speaking of goes around, comes around. Hmm. Um, uh, do we really need to do yet another Roy Moore uh, uh, review? Well, of, he's of, of of you know, kind of in the news lately. Past. Past. Yeah. Um, in case you don't know, yeah. just really quickly, he hauled in a big you know washing machine sized granite monument into the Alabama uh -huh. uh, building. Some other lawyers saw this, decided that's not that's kind of you know church-state separation issue here. Um, ordered it, wanted to get it removed. Took him to court. They yeah. said get rid of it. He said no. They he appealed it. They said get rid of it. He said bite me. Um, and now finally they've gone around and they've actually said that they're suspending him now. Mm -hmm. The other eight justices have gotten together and said, no, we're going to get pull this out. Because the alternative was $5,000 per day in yeah. fines. That the taxpayers the state, get slammed. Exactly, to the state of Alabama. Not against uh, Roy Moore, but against the state and taxpayers. Yeah, and the state and, and Alabama's already got massive deficits. Exactly, I mean, so they didn't need another $5,000 each and every day. Yeah, yeah. for this whole this, this circus, this, this man's you know, per exactly. personal... Exactly, crusade, it was his own little crusade. Yeah. Right. yeah, so Alabama's chief justice was suspended for disobeying a federal court order that he remove a Ten Commandments monument from the Rotunda State Judicial Building. Hmm. Yet Saturday, the massive granite marker remained in place, and there were no signs it would be removed. It would be moved soon. Uh, outside the building, about a hundred people sat in the front steps in lawn chairs, praying and listening to people preach. Chief Justice Roy Moore, who installed the 5,300-pound monument two years ago, was suspended with pay Friday when the nine-member Judicial Inquiry Commission referred an ethics complaint against him to the Court of the, Ju 
to the court of the judiciary, which can discipline and remove justices. <coughs> Moore had no immediate comment after the decision. His, spokes, his spokesman, Tom Parker, said his attorneys would respond to the complaint on Monday. A spokesman said Friday that Moore still intends to formally appeal to the federal remove, uh, appeal the federal removal order to the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, well, they, they already, I thought he did that, and they said, they, we're not getting into this. Exactly. They did. He did go into it. They no. said, no, it's coming down. We're not taking it. Uh, he apparently wants to get some kind of petition or whatever together. And, mm-hmm. uh, it's so. insane. This yeah. Attorney General Bill Pryor said the public court uh, corruption and white-collar crime unit in his office will handle the pro- prosecution of the chief justice on the ethics complaint. He said senior justice, uh, senior associate justice Gorman Houston will perform chief justice duties while Moore is suspended. Um, when Moore still refused to move the marker, the state Supreme Court eight associate justice overruled him and ordered the monument out of the rotunda, though officials said it could be placed elsewhere in the building. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically right now they're just looking where to go ahead and put the thing. Um, yeah, th- this because is, they're thinking it might be a really big spectacle to actually yeah. haul it out of the building because we got all these protesters. Yeah. So just put it in the corner, you know, outside of public Yeah, move field. it to a corner office or something. Exactly. You see, this exactly. is what is incredible to me. And, you know, just, just the sheer in- depth to which, you know, the, the people who are supporting more exactly. do not get it. Exactly. They don't get what the problem is. And and to the extent to which you know the uh, the theocrats, I'm going to call them what they are: it's the theocrats, the yeah. people on the re- on the far religious right, okay, who want America to stop being a repre- a, a, a pluralistic representative yeah. democracy and to start being a theocracy, yeah. okay. The extent to which they don't get what the problem is here, and and they are making several arguments that I don't think are being challenged uh, effectively in the mainstream media, which is that. Uh, the first argument they're making is that Judge Roy Moore's First Amendment rights are being violated yeah. because all he's doing here is, you know, he's just trying to acknowledge God, right? He's just trying to express his yeah. religious convictions. This is it's a like, lot more than simple acknowledgement. No, no, no. That's not what he's doing because if it were just Judge Roy Moore uh, personally, as a citizen, saying, yes, I want to acknowledge, you know, God, who I think is the foundation of all of our laws, which he's not, but... I want to I want to have this acknowledgement. Yeah. You know, then you know, he would have he could very easily just have put this monument on the front lawn of his of his house. Exactly. Okay. I mean that if that's all he wanted to do. If this was just about him acknowledging the god that he believes in, okay? Yeah. The act of putting this monument in the in the foyer of of the judicial building, yeah. okay? Was all about sending a message. Okay, yeah. that was a statement. Okay, yeah. oh, and it was yeah. a statement above and beyond. Oh, this is just me doing this. Yeah, I mean, this is this is this, this is him. Is, this is a statement saying the state of Alabama. Yeah, I mean, says that all its laws come from the Judeo-Christian God, no mm-hmm. other. And uh, and yeah, we're just gonna you know. So it's an endorsement of a sect of a specific exactly. ter- sectarian view. Exactly. If okay. you're if you're not Judeo-Christian, if you don't have that belief, <coughs> then you're somehow a little bit less. And and it's amazing to me. I've, I've been paying attention to a lot of a lot of the media on this. And one of the arguments, the justifications that the theocrats give for um, you know when. You give them the argument, look, if the government is going to acknowledge religion, there are, there are many, many religions active in this country. Yeah. In America, you're allowed to have freedom of religion. So if the government is going to acknowledge one religion, you know, Judeo-Christianity, in a government building, then out of, out of fairness, you're going to have to acknowledge Buddhism, Islam, Baha'i, yeah. you know, whatever else. Some of them. Yeah, and their their re, their reaction to this is is quite remarkable. Okay, they, they take this whole tack of, well, no, no, see, our laws... The laws of our land come from the Ten Commandments, yeah. which they don't. Not okay, at all. but um, you know, the, the and they don't come from those religions. Yeah, and so for this reason, Christianity is entitled to special rights and privileges. Yeah, which is essentially what they're saying. Yeah, you know, the Ten Commandments deserves special dispensation that writings or or tenets from other religions that people are free to practice. Yeah. But they don't deserve the special consideration because our Constitution, you know, comes from our the Bible and comes from the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Again, which, which it again doesn't. is complete hogwash. Yeah. You know, I mean, half the commandments. The Bible here in a second, half the commandments we ignore, and the other oh. half are common sense. But don't steal, don't kill. 
But again, again, in the Constitution, if you look at the Constitution, there is, there is, and, and Roy, it's amazing to me. I mean, Roy Moore, he he works the t- the talk shows and he works the TV uh, yeah. networks, and he and he constantly keeps saying, oh, you know, the Constitution acknowledges that God is a source of law, and mm. and and the journalist and the interviewer never challenges him on yeah. uh, on that because yeah. it doesn't. We got the Constitution right here. There's nothing. There's no passage in the Constitution that says the laws of our land, you know, come from the Holy Bible and the yeah. God of Christianity. Yeah. It doesn't say that anywhere. There's no acknowledgement of that kind at all. The only time you hear uh, or you'll see anything um, in the Constitution that has to do with um, uh, you any, know, form any, any sort of religious acknowledgement is when they, uh, it's the date at the very beginning where they talk about, you know, they, the year of our Lord, <laughs> which was a convention of writing. Exactly. At the time, still is, more or less. But here, here is where the Constitution, right at the beginning, okay. It uh, says our laws come from. It says we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice. We, the people, establish justice. Okay? That's plain English, folks. It says right there. Ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. So the constitution does not say God is the source of America's law. And it never once says that, you know, you have the right to bear arms because our Lord Jesus Christ saith so. Yeah, it doesn't, it's, yeah. It's those not in there. Religious reasons so. aren't the reasons given for things. Exactly. It says, where does it say the laws come from? We the people. We the people of the United States establish justice. We the people secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves. Yeah. And that's what it says. Okay, then it goes down in Article 1. All legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in a Congress of the United States. So again, it doesn't say, you know, any particular religious writings, any particular religion, uh, any particular deity. Never says that. Doesn't say it anywhere. Uh, the only thing that uh, you'll, you'll find the Constitution saying, as a matter of fact, having to do with uh, religion... Shall make uh, no law. Yeah, it has to. Do, it has to do with prohibitions, yeah. right? I mean, it's for example, uh, there's no religious test allowed for office. Yeah, that one's violated routinely at the state yeah. level. Yeah. Um, and what exactly does the First Amendment say? Let's read it together, shall we? <laughs> Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Okay, that's that's the first uh, you know part yeah. of that amendment. So, and that's the salient one here. So shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. What does that mean? It means it says the government can't stick its nose in your religious business. Yeah. Okay, you as the citizen... Can practice whatever religion you want. It's your right to decide that. It's your right to make that decision. What faith am I going to practice? You know, this, that, or the other one, or none at all. Yeah. And the government can't stick its nose in in there and say, no, that's the wrong one. Do this one. Yeah. At the same time... So that's, the, you know, Congress can't prohibit the free exercise. Yeah. That's what it means. But it also says that Congress shall make no law res- respecting an establishment of religion. Now, here's where you can get into a little bit of playing around with the wording here. Because the theocrats will say, oh, well, putting a big old monument in the foyer of yeah. the judicial building doesn't mean we're making a law yeah. establishing, yeah. you know, yeah, a establishing religion. Establishing a state religion. Yeah. But the problem is that effectively what it is doing is that it is sending the message yeah. that this is the favored belief system in the state of Alabama. Yeah. You know, sure, you can be Jewish if you want. You know, you can be Buddhist if you want. You can be Baha'i if you want. You can be atheist if you want. You can be a Muslim if you want. Yeah. But just keep in mind that you're... All of you are second-class citizens, and anyone who, and, and this is the one we favor. And that the judge you are going right. to be sitting in front of, and yeah. who is judging you, is a, essentially a fundamentalist Christian who yeah. says that Christianity, this came out in the trial, I mean, it was mm-hmm. essentially said in so many words, that Christianity is the only real well, the hearing, religion. Yeah. In yeah. Hearing, yeah. yeah. Christianity is the only real religion. The others are just faiths or beliefs, but they're, you know, they're kind no. of wishy-washy things. Um, Christianity is the only real one that we have. Yeah. And so if you go in there and say, well, you know, I did this because of my religious beliefs and I'm Buddhist or something like that, it's like, well, mm-hmm. eh, you know, the judge doesn't <laughs> share your opinion because you're not a Christian. Right. So is that really going to be a fair trial? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, when you already know that uh, the judge who is deciding your fate has a, exactly. a, a religious bias, 
against exactly. you, to, at least to some degree. Exactly. There's reason to be concerned about the it has the happened in cases. Yeah. He has done wacky stuff in cases before yeah. based on his religious belief. This is not simply an empty, you know, idea that we have that, you know, he could, you know, have a bias. He does, and it has been demonstrated. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what's interesting. Now, let's look at this claim that the theocrats are making, that the laws of our land come from the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Because this is, this is interesting, because they, they state that explicitly. It's like, well, this is the source of our laws. Yeah. So why shouldn't we have it up? Well, let's look at the Ten Commandments. Okay. Uh, and keep in mind also that we, what we're referring to here are the, the Charlton Heston Ten Commandments. We're looking at Ten Commandments version 1.0 yeah. from Exodus 20. We're not looking at Ten Commandments version 2.0 from Exodus 34, yeah. which are different. It's, it's like the second set of Ten Commandments that no one seems to know about. But anyway. Well, no, this is the second. The first set... Is the ones that God dictated? No, no, no. This is and this then is, we're destroyed. No, yeah, and this is and the, yeah. And this is the second yeah. set. No, no. The the ones that, that Moses chiseled out himself. But the ones that are referred to as that that are on all the monuments everywhere. Yeah. That's 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 the Exodus twenty set. It but is. But is Exodus twenty the first set? Or the that's second? the that's the first set. The second set okay. is Exodus thirty four. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is okay. So what's the first one? Okay. Again. We're not talking about what people believe and what they do or don't, okay? We're talking about uh, the laws of the land. Okay, first one, I am the Lord your God, okay? You shall have no other gods before me, okay? Yeah. That's not a law of the land. Yeah, and okay. what about that freedom of religion? Yeah. You shall not uh, make into yourself any graven image, a carved image. Hmm. <laughs> now, this is interesting. <laughs> you can... I you can, uh, was graved into a stone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> huh. So, wouldn't that make the Ten Commandments monument a violation of one of the commandments? <laughs> it's this big and, what about our, and what about our Statue of that Liberty? There, yes. Well, that's not a, you could say that's not a religious Well, statue. yeah, it's not religious, but thou shalt have no graven images. Well, but because it goes on to say, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under exactly. the world. Exactly. Hmm. So, yeah, that yeah. would prohibit uh, but, uh, that uh, huge monument uh, that we have called... The Statue of Liberty. No one. Ah, loophole. Statue of Liberty. Oh. She represents a concept, the concept of liberty, freedom. It's an abstract. But what is she this? Is an what abstract is, that, it shall not resemble or it shall not... See, the Ten Commandments monument is supposed to be like this reproduction of the, the slabs that Charlton <laughs> yeah, Heston yeah. carried down from the from the paper mache mouth. Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay. But anyway, all right. <clears throat> so, um, I shall not take the Lord of... Uh, name the Lord of your God in vain. Not a law of the land. Right. right. Okay. I mean, certainly something that believers hold in disdain, but it's not a law. Okay. Right. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy? That's not an American law. Yeah. There's no law that says you got to go to church on Sunday. Yeah. Or you got to go to synagogue or whatever. And blue laws are coming down. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, now, let's get on. So those are, now let's get on to some next one. Now, honor your father and your mother. Okay. Now, that's a good idea, generally good idea, speaking. Definitely, definitely. Unless, of course, they're the kind of father yeah. and mother where if you get sick, they don't take you to the hospital and, and they pray true, for you and you die. True, I wouldn't true. necessarily honor that kind of father and mother. Yeah. But on the whole, honoring yeah. your father and your mother, it's a good idea. Yeah. That's a, but it's not an American law. Yeah. yeah. There's not a law that says, you know, you unlike, in the, unlike in the Old Testament Mosaic laws, that if you don't respect your parents, we'll drag you out in the street stone and stone you. you. Okay. Yeah. In America... It's, again, it's a good idea, but not yeah. of all the land. Okay, you shall not murder. Okay, that's a law. We do have a law okay. against that. But, you know... Uh, so does every other country in the world. Yeah. Uh, civilizations that predated this dog, you know, the Ten Commandments yeah. had those laws, too. Yeah. China, civilizations that had no ties to... Yeah. Christianity. The civil sure. But, in generally speaking, you can say, all right, here's, good idea. here's a thing that we have a law against, and it happens to be in the Ten Commandments. So, are we keeping track? That's one. You shall not commit adultery. Again... Excellent idea. <laughs> and grounds for divorce. Yeah. I'm sure, you know, definitely. I don't think you can be arrested for it, though. And but right. It's not, a, in prison. it's not a law of the land, not like in those Muslim countries where they have the Sharia law where they'll drag you out in the street and stone you. Exactly. If you, you know, again, a very good idea, you know, but not a law of the land. Yeah. You shall not steal. Okay, here we go. Now there's two. We happen to have a law against theft that all okay. other civilizations have. Yeah, but here's the thing: you can say here's an American law that also happens to be referred to in the Ten Commandments. Yeah. And again, there are purely secular, yeah. logical reasons why stealing and killing is bad. Sure, yeah, bad, bad for the not economy. Not just because just, you know just the Bible nice. says so. Yeah, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Again, I think excellent idea. Be honest. Yeah. Okay, but it's not a law. Okay. You unless, could, you could unless argue you're perjury. Like, well, unless you're under oath, but that's a specific case where you're under oath. Okay. You know. 
I mean, if I if I and, and as a general rule, lying about someone. Yeah. Not a crime. Yeah, I mean, if I look at you and say, hi, Ashley, my name's Phil, which it isn't, <laughs> you know, that's not I can't really... have him arrested. Yeah. Uh, now, here's one. Okay, thou shalt not covet. Okay, not covet your neighbor's house or you know, your neighbor's wife or male servant or female servant yeah. or ox or donkey or this, that, or the other. Okay, now this one's just kind of dumb <laughs> when you think about it. I mean, now, generally, coveting is a thing that can be, well, for one thing, it's not a law. We don't have a law in our land saying you can't want what your neighbor's got. You exactly. Can't. But even so, just as a basic principle, telling people you can't covet, it's stupid. Yeah. Because coveting... Our okay. entire economy is based on coveting. Precisely. I mean, if you and I are in the same industry and we each, are, we each own a business... Exactly. ...and your business really takes off... Yeah. And becomes real successful, and you buy a big house and a car and stuff. Yeah, I got the Cadillac. And well, I'm your competitor, and I'm like, hmm, okay, he's doing real well, so I need to, what do I need to do? I need to work harder. I need to excel. Yeah. I need to expand my company. Yeah, because you so, want to have the same things that I do. And so, what yeah. are you, and so you do that, and then jobs are created. Yeah. Because coveting is what inspires competition in a free market exactly. economy. So exactly. to say you can't covet stuff is stupid. That's like yeah. anti-free market. Exactly. So downright un American. So that was just dumb. Okay. <laughs> so that's just plain dumb. Okay. All right. So uh, I think I think I've gone through them all, haven't I? Maybe I maybe I skipped or truncated a couple. Let's see. Uh, remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Blah blah blah. Okay. Well, generally speaking, though, so we've gone through the Ten Commandments, yeah, and how many can we point to that are actually yeah. laws on the books in America? No. Well, the murdering. Okay. Thou shalt not kill. And stealing. And thou shalt not steal. That's two. Two out of ten. Not a real good 20%. argument then. Yeah. Okay, so, hmm, do the Ten Commandments represent the laws of the land? I think if not. <laughs> so, but anyway, so again, that's just, uh, you know, the, the all. It, but it amazes me that when the theocrats get on these TV talk shows, and they, they aren't really challenged on them. I mean, Judge Roy Moore himself comes on TV and just baldly says, well, the laws of our land come the ten, from the Ten Commandments. There's no one around to say, well, there's a couple, but not all of them. Okay? And there's no law <laughs> Literally saying, a couple. You know, you can't yeah. cover your neighbor's wife's donkey's whatever. You know, <laughs> there's no law saying that you have to honor your father and your mother. I mean, yeah. generally... Or no grave yeah. images. Yeah. And so. in fact, what amazed me, one, I, I read the transcript on a, a website of one news interview. And uh, they had uh, one, like one of the lawyers, one of the plaintiffs in the suit, uh, saying, um, okay, uh, you know, and, and then, of course, he had one of the theocrats supporting Judge Roy Moore. And the interviewer said, all right, um, you know, Ms. Lawyer, who is suing, uh, what's wrong with, okay, Let's look, look, okay, take the Ten Commandments for a minute. Now, ignoring the first few that talk all about worship and God. Exactly. What's wrong with having this, this plaque in there that talks all about morals and stuff? Yeah. That don't people need good morals and what have you? And you're like, that isn't the point. Well, first off, you can't just ignore those. Yeah. You can't just say, oh, well, let's pretend when it's inconvenient for the, the God commandments yeah. to be there. Let's just, we'll just yeah. pretend that they're not there and don't matter. Because they, they, they go back to the other two. You know, yeah. if, you're, if you say you want to take it out, say what? Are you for murder? Yeah. <laughs> So, well, no. Yeah. But so anyway. we're not exactly, you know, against graven images. Well, uh, anyway, so here's that. This thing is coming down. I mean, it's just a matter of time. The problem, of course, is that, um, you know, Roy Moore loves, is being a martyr in all of this. I think he loves yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, but it is, it's dismaying just the amount of people out there in the general public who just don't get it, who just don't get what the yeah. problem is. Yeah. You know, again, this isn't about the individual right of the citizen to believe whatever they want to believe. Yeah, he can you know? do that as much as he wants. He can go yeah. to church every single Sunday. And so can anyone else. Yeah. And this is this is a, more of the fear rhetoric that they are using to hop up, you know, the, yeah. the theocrats when they when they say, oh, well, you know, they're making the slippery slope argument. Yeah. The Ten Commandments banned. Yeah. No, that's two, that's, two, that's tomorrow, one of the ones I saw. Yeah, tomorrow your church will be closed if, you know, exactly. the evil godless liberals get their way. I mean, that's the, yeah. the fear rhetoric that they're yeah. spouting out there, that this is, this is supposedly some vast evil conspiracy yeah. to stamp out all religion everywhere. It's not. It's just you can't put this freaking monument in the middle of a government building. Yeah. You know? Move it to a park. I'm sure there are many... Move it yards from the left churches? onto a, you know, public property, and there you go. How Bye many property. churches do you think are in the city of Montgomery? Probably, yeah. you know, a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Any of them would be happy to have this. Plop it on the lawn, then we're not talking about this anymore. Private property, you can do what you want. Yeah. No one's going closing churches. That's private property. You yeah. can do what you want. 
government property, something different. Yeah. So anyway, we're th- we've got the phone lines wide open, 477-2288. We've had a couple callers. Um, um, uh, just uh, We thought we'd cheese a few uh, more people off than apparently we have. Uh, maybe everyone just agrees with this, that this uh, whole Ten Commandments monument just should yep. come down and Judge Roy Moore should uh, do the dignified thing and quit. But uh, yep. Step down, step anyway. aside. But anyway, that's what four seven seven two two eight is, that phone number to call us live. And uh, we figure that's pretty much going to be the topic of uh, conversation for the rest of the show. We're on for you know, another 45 minutes until 6, so give us a call. And also... If you try to call in and you don't manage to get through, uh, because the way the show works, if you're brand new to the show, we take live calls every week, and we never manage to get around to everybody. And that is why we have our viewer email address. It's for TV show feedback, and it's tv at atheist-community.org. Uh, Steve in the control room will put that title up at some point so you can read it. And uh, that's the show for viewer emails. I mean, the the, the show for viewer emails. <laughs> that's the address for viewer emails. Yeah. To send us in and send us your comments. And we read them all. We answer them all. The best ones we'll bring to TV we'll, and, and read them out over the air live. And uh, and if we get really good ones, we'll put them out uh, on the... Uh, We'll, we'll post them to the website, too. We have a viewer email address yeah, uh, page yeah. on the website. But yeah, that's... We did have a couple this week. I didn't, and I'm losing track of what they were. I can't remember offhand, but okay. I know we had at least one. So, so anyway, well, we're just going to go ahead, and I think we'll talk to Sam first on line one, see if he's... Hey, you're on the air. Thank you for taking my call. Sure, I sure. you guys. Oh, yeah. Um, I had a couple of questions, a couple of comments. First of all, Certainly. Why, uh, why isn't that judge who is in contempt of court not doing time like the rest of us would do? Uh, We're trying to figure that out too. Uh, well, he he has been suspended. Yeah. With uh, pay. I, uh, I yeah. I think that they're trying to take it a little slowly because yeah. they realize that they've got a tiger by the tail with this one. Yeah. And so they don't want to martyr the man. Exactly. You know, just Which all is exactly one, what would happen in one fell swoop, right? Yeah. To yeah. the extent I think that um, I believe that he deserves to be found in contempt yeah. and. Uh, uh, and then suffer whatever consequences he needs to suffer. But uh, the remaining justices were, were correct in suspending him. I think now exactly. the next step will be to see this week uh, how if the Supreme Court decides, okay, we finally need to settle this issue once and for all. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm predicting that within at least the next two weeks he'll be removed from the bench. Okay. I think he'll be removed. Wow. That, won't stop the, okay. that won't stop the suit, though. I, you know, he is gonna, he's going to fight this to the yeah. Supreme Court, yeah. and we'll I... deal with it there. I, I'm kind of under the impression, though, that they're not going to take this one. Um, I think this, uh, again, hmm. what little I know about you know legal precedents and stuff, this is such a blatant case. It is so extreme that they wouldn't take it because the precedent they're setting is if you're going to be a wacko extremist, then you can't you know push that on everybody else, which is fairly obvious. Hmm. Um, I've heard that there's a better chance that even the Texas case might have a better chance just because it's a little more subtle. It's a little more applicable to lots and lots of different cases. You mean the one that Mr. Van Orden... Exactly. Here in, exactly. So that might end up uh, gaining some steam and getting exactly. back on the... Right. Exactly. That might have a better chance, because, again, the Roy Moore one is just is well, I don't know. extreme. I, I don't know if I agree with you on that. I think that yeah. it, it's quite possible that other pending uh, monument yeah. cases might, like, get in the whole... The lawyers might all... Get in a holding pattern and do a wait and see how yeah. this, because clearly the just the amount of media attention that this has gotten, yeah, um, which again I think was completely machinated from the beginning. Yeah. I mean it was the intent I think of Judge Roy Moore to cause this kind of a stand. Oh, definitely. Uh, because he just was bound to determine from the get go that he was going to take this stand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's that uh, I, I I think that the Supreme Court may just be put in the position of saying we've got to decide. Because, I mean, they don't, they don't operate in a vacuum either. I mean, the Supreme Court is going to look at the fact that this is something that is in the public consciousness right now. It is an important issue that probably needs to be resolved. Yeah. Just like when civil rights legislation and stuff like that, you know, um, that ended up, you know, yeah. going as far as it did simply because, you know, the, the zeitgeist was such that, you yeah. know, that it, there needed yeah. to be some yeah. sort of legal definition. And the Supreme Court has already, you know, they've, it's already known, they have not decided on the legality of yes. these kinds of monuments in government buildings. They've yeah. said you can't put up, like, the Ten Commandments in public schools. Yeah. So like that, but they haven't made like specific cases in terms of capital building rotundas or judicial yeah. buildings or what have you. And this may be the thing that just says we need to do this now. Yeah. So so I don't know that uh, the Supreme Court will be able to sort of you know Ignore hide under the one. covers forever <laughs> on this one. Well, yeah. 
changing the subject here on you for just a second. Uh -huh. uh, back in the 80s, I read, and it was in the Salt Lake Tribune, and uh, I can't say that it's gospel what this man wrote, but he indicated the Catholic Church was spending something around $250 million a year in hush money. This was back in the 80s. Hmm. So it isn't like they didn't know this was going on. It's been going on since around the year zero. Are wow. you talking about the um, child abuse, something like that, or hush money just... Hush money uh, to quiet the families because of what their priests were doing. You know, kind of like what Michael Jackson had to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> oops, sorry. Uh, you know, uh, well, if that's the case, boy, it would sure suck for the Catholic Church because here they've done is they've what they've already been spending what, what a quarter of a billion dollars a year yeah. in all this hush money, and then they end up getting sued anyway and having yeah. to spend more. Boy, what a what a real lousy investment that was. Yeah, I, I they, don't, just, they just didn't have enough money to finally keep it quiet enough. To keep all I guess not. Yeah. Yeah, so they missed a few payments, and so here's another, here's another subject. I, I don't know. I, I I I'll I'll look into that. I don't know if that's just a, you know a story that's out there or what, and what the yeah. what level of the veracity it is. I mean, it's quite possible that there may have been individual cases right. where, like, a particular uh, you know priest was like, uh oh, we, we got to and to avoid a big public scandal, uh, they may have dealt with it in terms yeah. of like an individual situation. Yeah. But boy, well, there so, were cases back then. Uh, sure, in fact, yeah. I, I specifically knew one where. Uh, the family was going to sue, and the Catholic bishop in Salt Lake, uh, the agreement was that they moved him out of the diocese mm. and put him in counseling and made sure that he didn't wind up back in a parish where he could abuse children, mm -hmm. that they would withhold the suit. And a couple of years later, the family goes on vacation to California, and on their way back through, they stop into Elko on Sunday and think, why don't we go to church? There's this <laughs> oh, priest boy. up here. <laughs> so, yeah, that one blew up right in their face. So oh, they yeah. get sued for a couple million over that one. <clears throat> wow. Boy, yeah, I mean, that's what the, that's that's the church, is, that's what the church has been doing, shuffling these people around and moving yeah. to a different church. <laughs> naughty, here's, here's naughty. another subject for you. Okay. Growing up in the eastern end of the state of Utah, I was raised on a ranch in a small community. Mm -hmm. And uh, right off the boundary of the school was a, you might call it a Mormon ward, but it was actually a teaching center. And we were all required to take classes in this Mormon ward before we could graduate. <clears throat> okay. I refused to do it, and I was able to graduate anyway. Well, how, what, uh, what age were you at this time? Ninth grade. Oh, okay. So like I, was, I wasn't allowed to go into high school until I completed so many hours of uh, Mormon ward teaching. And I'm not Mormon. Never have been. Really? Wow. Yes. And this, this would have been, you wouldn't have been allowed to graduate even from a public high school? Yeah, well, it, was it, was a, it was a public school, yes. Sure. Wow. So... So somehow they, they had a thing in place where students, even in the public schools, were obligated to undergo some sort of religious training. If you allowed it to occur, yes, that's correct. If it, you allowed if you, it to occur. If you allowed, I, I refused. I refused to go so to the So you could opt course. out of these classes. Uh, well, I thought, no, I, thought, I had to re refuse, and then my dad got involved in it, and... Uh, and then our attorney got involved in it, and they hired wow. up and let me graduate. Yeah, see, that's see, that's insane. I mean, I, I don't see how they were able to have a situation like that to begin with, unless um, the governor lack of is Mormon. Mormon. Uh, all the state, most of the state senators are Mormon. The school teachers are Mormon. The sure. principal is Mormon. Wow. In fact, I was the only Catholic in the school, actually. Wow. And and, 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 and let me preface this to say I was yeah. Catholic then. I didn't yeah. have a choice. I was too young to know any better. Well, sure, yeah. I mean, I'm a committed atheist at this point in my fine. life. <laughs> we we don't. Yeah, hold it. You, you, you are forgiven. <laughs> Thank <us>. you. Yeah. <laughs> they got me under the water. Go, go forth and say no more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Another subject for you. I just finished. But that's just that's wild to me that they were able yeah. to have this kind of system in place. No one in all this time called them. Uh, you know, uh, brought it to their attentions. Like, hey, yeah. over there in Utah. Uh, yeah, they're, yeah. They've got this pretty much theocratically instituted uh, yeah, process going school. on, yeah. where even public school st students aren't allowed to graduate unless they do religious training. Yeah, that's such a fl that's an even bigger church state violation than Judge Roy Moore. Yeah, eighty percent of the state of Utah is Mormon. It's pretty tough to fight it. You know? Yeah, and, uh, the other twenty percent are going to fight it because it hurts yeah. you. And there are a lot if of you, a lot if of you remote... fight that one. It's going to hurt you in your businesses well, well, yeah. uh, and yeah. everywhere else you go. And there's lots of remote deserts out there in Utah. Yeah, <laughs> I can well, get lost through a bit out there. <laughs> one other subject for you. Okay. I just finished the book uh, Under the Banner of Heaven. Oh I yes, read that. It is excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a subject in there called Blood Atonement. Maybe we can pick that one up on another day. But yeah. basically, it is it's the right of the, the Mormons can communicate with God, and he talks to all of them, although uh -huh. he doesn't talk to any of the rest of us. Uh -huh. And sometimes uh -huh. he will say that someone like uh, these folks down here in, in Austin on the uh, Atheist Channel are, are so bad that they can never go to heaven, and it's our responsibility mm -hmm. to go down there and spill their blood. That's what Blood Atonement means. Wow. God tells them to kill you so you can go to heaven. Wow. Well. So I can go to heaven? Wait, but I thought they just said that there was already no chance of that. Well, well there we isn't can't unless go. they kill you. 
Oh, so if so, so if a religious person <laughs> kills us, yes. do they get to go to heaven or do we get to go? Well, they're they automat they're automatically they're already there. Okay, so, no, remember they're, if you're Mormon, right? I mean, it's like yes. when you die, you get to you get to be a, a little god with your own universe. Apparently, yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So is that the rule that our god is instituted? But then, for us? well, that's interesting though. But there's also heaven. So if you're if you're Mormon and you die and then you get your own universe and you get to be God, but then there's heaven for well, who goes there? What Mormons go to heaven? Is there a heaven though? Well, well that's I what they just said. I they probably said, misspoke. Not, it's uh, not really heaven for Mormons. They have a celestial kingdom, which ah, apparently is different. Ah, okay. I don't know yes. how it's wired, mm. but uh, yeah. Mm. Well, <laughs> but yeah, it gives them the right to kill other people, and that's uh, what's the story of uh, in this book. Basically, it starts out as uh, the Ron and uh, Dan Lafferty killings of their sister-in-law and the baby and everything. And that was their but, justification. That whole exactly blood atonement. Right. It was the command from God to kill him. They were exercising yeah. this blood wow. atonement thing. Absolutely. Creepy. Well, I, I, I have, I have bought the book, but I have not started it yet. Um, so I'm just gonna have to mm. buckle down and 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 do it one week. I mean, I've. Cr- I, uh, uh, Krakauer is a great writer already. I mean, I know that yeah. I've read his past books, but this is a new topic for him, and certainly, you know, and he's ruffled a few feathers with this one, yeah. as you will when you, yeah. you you talk about embarrassing things that religions don't want to hear. Yeah, interesting, interesting thing, you know, uh, my daughter wanted to read it. Of course, eighty mm-hmm. percent of Utah is Mormon. That means twenty percent isn't. Mm-hmm. But uh, she goes down to the library to check it out. There's an 18 month waiting list. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I find myself wow. buying this book more than once and mailing uh, it to Utah to help those boys out. Oh, you know? boy, yeah. Jeez. Crazy. That's yeah, incredible. I said, one, you know, <laughs> one of these is if, if those 20 percenters ever wake up in the morning and say, What are we doing here? <laughs> Let's move. I live in Austin now, folks. Yeah. One of us that did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get my family moved down, too. Yeah. I appreciate you guys. Hey, Keep up the good work. Hey, thank you, thank Sam, you. for your call. It's very fun. Take care. All right. <laughs> Just a reminder to uh, all of all of uh, our pals in the peanut gallery that if you are an atheist or agnostic unbeliever uh, person of any tr- any stripe um, and you want to meet some others, um, our bagel shop meetings, which are for unbelievers only, uh, are wide open to you. And uh, come on out and say hi. Yeah, I had a couple people, new people show up today, mm-hmm. which was yeah. very nice. Oh, always fun. So I believe Mike is next on two, I think. Yes. All right. Hey, thanks for holding. You're on the air. Hi, guys. I was just uh, making a comment on the adultery in the Bible. Uh-huh. It's not the way most people think of it. If you get divorced, you're basically committing adultery. I mean, the Bible does not allow divorce. I've heard that, and, yeah. the, and the Catholics, the, the, the Vatican's really strict about that. Exactly. That's why they don't get divorced. They get annulled. They were never married. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's always a loophole somehow. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So basically, if we were set up on uh, you know, the Ten Commandments, divorce would not be allowed in this country, which, again, goes against what the Ten, ten Commandments Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and of course, having a graven image of the Ten Commandments, like, you know, I, I would argue, is violating one of the Ten Commandments. Yeah. But, but again, they could probably make some make some explanation as to why it's not as yeah. well. So, yeah. and were you guys aware that as of September first, uh, Texas school kids have to start saying yeah. the Pledge of Allegiance with "Under God" in it, and they also had a uh, moment of silence? Yeah, yeah, I forgot to mention that they have to do the 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 National Pledge of Allegiance. And then the also the state. No, pledge. I no we did, no we did. That. I mean, so. when I was in you know I was in uh, junior high and high school in Houston, and we always did the pledge at the beginning of the day. I mean, yeah. It wasn't really an issue then. Yeah. The, you know, uh, I the the moment of silence thing is new, and it's again it's a thing to to be to we got to watch it carefully. Um, I because what can you know? All right, I, I think again it's it's inappropriate simply by virtue of the fact that. Um, you know what business does? It's not just that the state doesn't have any business telling you know kids to pray or not to pray. But then you know to, it's, it seems to me doubly arrogant to then say, "All right, here's your 60 seconds of the day yeah. during which you get to do whatever you want, including pray." It's like, no, no, no. Okay, I mean, yeah. you don't even really have the right to say that. A student, a, a student in school in any public school in America can pray whenever the hell they feel like. They can pray in the locker room, at the gym. You can pray yeah. between classes. You can pray before lunch. You can pray, uh, you know, before a test. I think there's a lot of that going on. Yeah. Um, and you, know, there's no, you don't even have to do it in school. You can do it every hour yes. that you're outside of school. No problem. So, so there's really, so it's, it's just completely superfluous to have this moment of silence anyway yeah. to, say, to say, oh, because and, and, this is a way of slipping it in and, and yeah. you know, uh, and and what's going to happen? I fear is we're going to have a situation like they had in in Louisiana, where yeah. they first passed the moment of silence, and it was okay for a while because everybody was doing their silent thing during the moment of silence. And then at one school, I forget exactly where it was. I think it might have been Baton Rouge, uh, but I might be wrong. Uh, one day during the moment of silence, 
a recited Christian prayer came out over the loudspeaker, yeah. boom, lawsuits happen, and the moment of silence was struck down as unconstitutional. Because yeah. again, that was this is how they're trying. This is how the theocrats are trying to do it. It's like let's give let's give the public. Like a, a very mild idea that they yeah. that they're used to. Yeah. Let's give them something. Oh, it's a moment of silence. See, that's harmless. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't hurt anyone. Yeah. Not a problem. And the public's like, okay, well, that's fair. Mm. Okay. And then you get them used to having this moment of silence. And then when we've had it for about a year, then suddenly people are saying prayers, yeah. and we don't know where it came from. And well, we're, because, we're in the midst of this thing that we shouldn't have been in. Because in the first there are place. The, under the assumption that well, these kids aren't using the moment of silence correctly. <laughs> They're sitting there playing their Game Boys, reading their comics. That's not what it's but that's for. The idea, but that's, but the, and so let's pray and yeah. show them what it's for. Yeah. And but, but I thought that's they the said it was a moment of silence for whatever for yeah. whatever sort of you, reflection you, you, do. you want to do. If you want to reflect on your Game Boy, uh, you exactly. know, uh, Super Metroid as score. As long as the volume is off, you're fine. Yeah. So so I, I mean, figured that with the uh, you know, the Ninth, Ninth Circuit uh, Court of Appeals out in California having stricken down the under God uh, phrase from that pledge. I thought that that would be taken over nationally. I'm sort of surprised that they're doing it here in Texas. Yeah. Well, it's uh, where where was it? Uh, just I think just last week. I think another uh, Colorado. I believe it was. They've held back on making any sort of a decision as to whether. Really? Okay. Taking, I think it, it's in kind of the pledge. There's a there's a pledge case in Colorado that I think is in a holding pattern. Okay. The problem. The well, problem here is, it's here it's actually gone through. They will yeah. have a moment of silence in Texas schools. Yeah. They will have the pledge of allegiance. Which they've kind God, of always had. And but they will have the state pledge. The problem. So. The see the problem with this kind of rote memorization. Yeah. Is that that's kind of what it becomes. Yeah, it, and you know the the pledge really kind of ought to mean something. Yeah, really. I mean, it ought to be an expression of honest patriotism and love for your country. That's whether it's got under God in it or not. Right? Yeah. And if you and you can leave it, you can say you can leave it up to the individual citizens. And if you want, if yeah. you choose to recite it with or without the under God, that's up to you. But it should mean something to say the pledge. Yeah. The problem is what what the pledge becomes. Right? Is this thing that you do. Yeah. Every morning at the beginning of class, where everyone stands up, and it's it's this thing that yeah. you recite, and the the sheer act of reciting it by rote, day by day by day by yeah. day, eventually just sort of strips of any meaning or significance. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't mean anything, yeah. you know. And you look at the text of the pledge. I mean, it's like ask the average seventh grader what a republic even is. Yeah, you know. Yeah, they're like mm-hmm. they can sit there and recite it every single yeah. day and know it down. Do they, the heart, do they really know they what it means? Don't know what they're saying. Yeah, it's I mean, just a string of words. Yeah. So. I'd say the be- a better way in schools to instill ideas of patriotism is let's have really, really good civics classes. Let's have really, really good yeah. American history classes where, you know, you learn about all the great stuff that this country's done for the last 225 yeah. odd years. Yeah. And, uh, and I- explain why it is that, uh, you know, we need to keep our old yeah. traditions going. Yeah. And, um, you know, not, and not try to introduce new ones like you know theocracy, where one religion has special privileges. Yeah. Why that's not fair? Yeah. Yeah. But they don't do that. They'd rather just have this rote memorization. So, anyway, uh, anything else, Mike? That's it. All you right. Good well, job, guys. Hey, Thanks appreciate you your call. Thank right. you. Okay. Um, okay. Charlie's next, and I guess he's on line three, and then the next caller would be on line one. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, put if you could put the line numbers next to the. Guys, okay. Yeah. So tr- this will be Charlie then, I think. Hi. You're on. Hi, how you doing? Just fine. Hey. Thanks for holding. You no problem. All right. Uh, just an observation. I wonder how the theocrats and the judge and his supporters would think somebody wanted to put a, a verse from the Koran, or even more radically, mm-hmm. from devil worship verse, yeah. <laughs> uh, there in the courthouse and perhaps... <sighs> Over the loudspeaker systems in the school. Well, I've already I've already heard the, their argument uh, against that. Uh, you know, uh, to say the reason we don't have those religious verses in our courts and in our public buildings, and the reason that we deserve to have the Ten Commandments instead, yeah. is because the Ten Commandments is where our laws come from, and they don't come from Islam or or other religions. Yeah. That's the argument they make, even though. You can demonstrate that to be false just by reading the text of the Constitution and reading the Ten Commandments and finding out that only two out of the ten represent laws in our country. Yeah. But that's their argument. They, that's, I, you know, it, we understand that it seems unfair to just have, you know, this relic from the Holy yeah. Bible in these public buildings, but you know, not to have something for the Scientologists and not to have something for the Buddhists yeah. and not to have something for the Muslims and what have you. It's just because, you know, this is where we get our laws from and not the Quran. So it's it's a practical matter. It has to do with American history. Yeah. That's the argument they make with a straight yeah. face. Yeah. It's nuts. Although They've also done this with faith based initiatives, I understand mm-hmm. as well, yeah. in mm-hmm. that people of these other organized religions that the current administration doesn't agree with 
they kind of get cut out of the faith-based planning meetings, discussions, and handouts of money. Yeah, wow. yeah, they yeah. do. So. That's that's the case. Yeah, but it is interesting to notice that uh, they have caved once or twice to this. Uh, I can't remember where it was, but again, they had the Ten Commandments monument up on public grounds, you know, <clears throat> around a courthouse or capital or whatnot. Um, and then another group came along and said, we want to put our monument up of our wacky religion called the Summums and the Seven Aphorisms. That was the great state of Utah okay. that we just spoke of. Okay. The Summum. Yeah, and basically yeah. they They're seven aphorisms is what they call yeah. it. They only have the Coptics over in Florida who believe in uh, worshiping ganja. Exactly. There you yeah. go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and instead of getting into a huge court battle and having to take down Ten Commandments, they said, okay, fine, you can put your monument up. Yeah, they so did. they let the so, so the summum monument so, yeah, is so up. The summum yeah. seven aphorisms monument is up. Well, if people go to the summum website, they'll <laughs> you, be in for a shot. You guys need to come up with your own set of uh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd like to. Yeah, the uh, I think they've just revised the Humanist Manifesto, and that would be a handy thing to have up. But yeah. ag- but again, I I don't I I don't think that mm. um, you know, judicial buildings should be playing favorites uh, with uh, whether you have one philosoph- philosophical point of view or religious yeah. belief or what have you. I mean, we do have the laws of the land. We have the U.S. Constitution, which I think is a perfectly acceptable document. I think we have, should have granite monuments to the Constitution. Yeah, replicas and, of the actual Constitution. In government like buildings. Yeah, you know, that would be interesting. And, and in, in terms of whatever private religion or philosophy you want to uh, adhere to, that's your business. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but uh, that's what it's uh, all about. So anything else? That's Todd? it. All right, man. Well, thanks, thanks for your balance. input. We appreciate it. Okay, that would be then Todd is online one. He's been holding very patiently. Hey, thanks. You're on the air. Hey, how's it going? We're good. Um, I just uh, wanted to bring something up about the Pledge of Allegiance because I don't think a lot of people really know the, the history of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And because uh, it was written in, I believe, 1890 by a Baptist clergyman. Yeah, that's right. And the original pledge goes, <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag and to the republic for which it stands one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. That's right. It doesn't mention God, and it doesn't mention the United States. It's yeah. meant to be a pledge for all republics, not yeah. That's right. just ours. And I think I think even one draft of it ended with uh, liberty, justice, and equality for all. I yeah. think there was that. Yeah, I, I think yeah. that was Sounds familiar. Uh, might have been. Yeah, uh, but and uh, yeah that's a good point. And that and that and that Baptist minister you mentioned mm-hmm. was a socialist. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another little uh, <laughs> hidden secret that uh, that they don't know about. But the funny thing to me, though, is that you know everyone arguing that we should be <laughs> reciting this, and mm-hmm. you know all the you know the heated debate over it. You know, it it didn't have the words under God in it for sixty five years. Yeah, it's right. only had that for about forty eight years yes. okay. or that's, so. That's and correct. you know, it's just ridiculous that people can stand there and argue when. A clergyman wrote it without, <laughs> yeah. without under God. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. A man, yeah, of, uh, a man of God wrote the original pledge without the word God in it. Yeah, because well, he didn't. He didn't feel it needed to be there. You know, right, and yeah. so why are they changing this guy's work? I mean, that's yeah. like going and changing right. you know, well, Shakespeare think, or any you know piece of literature, yeah, or some yeah. poem or something, yeah. because. You know, let's take Edgar Allan Poe's, you know, The Raven, and let's put uh, some Christian reference. <laughs> make, in. May, or make, make him a woodpecker, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, um, um. <laughs> never more. <laughs> well, the, um, the whole, uh, the thing about yeah, the uh, the changing of the pledge took place in 19, uh, pledge, yeah, uh, yeah. in 1954. Yeah. And it was it was part of, it was it was all part of the Red Scare. Yeah. yeah. So it was, it was so the that godless was the godless the uh, godless yeah, atheist, right? God, so that was yeah. the uh, that that's what that was. So uh, it, it was it was a relic of perhaps the least pleasant decade in American history, yeah. where everybody you know people look back on it now with sort of rose colored glasses and they think, oh, it's yeah. all Ozzy and Harriet yeah. and, yeah. and Fonzie and happy days. And that was a really paranoid, crazy time yeah. in American history, the 1950s. You know, where we, where we had institutionalized segregation. Yeah. Um, you know, we as uh, people, you know, we. They didn't have the understanding of like uh, you know like health matters and yeah. stuff that we have today. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. of just every you know, pregnant women smoked and drank martinis. <laughs> you know, I mean that's just kind of yep, that was and, my mom. and it was uh, just uh, <laughs> and you turned out great. So uh, you know, so it was yeah. just it was it was not the most enlightened time. I mean, people were still high from uh, you know the, it was you know, the the post war. Uh, yeah. This was still the boom, right? Yeah. Uh, but uh, it was a time of a lot of uh, inappropriate yeah. excess. And also, when the pledge was, when that, when that was really big in the news, the under God and the pledge and stuff like that, uh, they had quotes from the president at the time and the people who wanted to put under God in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they knew that this was going to be said in schools, mm-hmm. and it was their plan to make kids say under God mm-hmm. 
yeah. every day. I mean, yeah. it, it, it wasn't just a subtle, you know, ooh, it sounds better with Thunder I God we, there. We recited prayer. It, it yeah. was, it was had... specifically yeah. to make sure. Yeah. Well, there was, already, there, was already, uh, there was already prayer going on in school at that yeah. time, too, because, of course, that's what the whole 1962 Murray versus Curlett was okay. about, getting that, the course. And God bless her for doing that. Yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> Thank God we're atheists. We like but, uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, so that's a really good point. Well, yeah. I had one we other question. Um, sure. When was the... Uh, in God We Trust legislated to be on the money. I know that it kind of was on, you know, on some it's money for a while. Oh, when yeah. was it actually, like, legislated I, that it's on all? I'm not quite sure about that. I know that In God We Trust has appeared sort of on our money off and on going back even more than a century. Civil War. And, yeah. Yes. I don't know when when it was exactly. I think it may have been during the, the same period. Paper That's what I was thinking. Paper. I'm sorry? Paper money McCarthy era. Oh, so this wasn't, a, it was, it, it became, did it, when, what we're trying to figure out, um, our producer's giving us a helping hand here. Um, when, when in God we trust replaced e pluribus unum, effectively yeah. as the national motto, I think was when I guess you sort of saw that institutionalized everywhere. But I know that in God we trust has appeared just in various, cur- on yeah, various yeah. currencies going back into well into the 1800s. Yeah. yeah. But when, the, when that became like an actual, uh, you know, when the, when the motto officially changed, I'll have to, I'll have to look yeah. that up again. I'm not fresh on that. So good, uh, good exercise for, homework for me. Yeah. And, uh, one other thing I read the other day I thought was kind of interesting. It said that, uh, that George Washington on his deathbed, uh, had, uh, didn't want anyone to say any prayers over him, didn't ask for a priest or last rites or any of that crap. Mm-hmm. I just thought that was good, you know, yeah. what the founding fathers say. And I keep that shit away from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly, you know, Thomas yeah. Jefferson was no friend to established yeah. clergy. Oh, no. Yeah. Definitely. So again, it, they, the whole the whole notion was, you know, it, it's this the government should not stick it. That's a private matter. And, yeah. you know, the, the, what is what is amazing to me about, you know, Roy Moore and his gang of theocrats who want to say that, you know, this was meant to be a, America was meant to be a Christian nation and the Constitution was meant to be a Christian document and it's all based on the Bible and the kingdom of God. And he's got this wacky idea that, that he has no. a constitutional requirement yeah. to well, acknowledge God. It's, 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 the Constitution, if anything, was a repudiation of that idea because yeah. what the colonists, right, were trying to get away from when they created this massive great experiment called America was they were trying to get away from how they were doing business and had been in Europe for yeah. centuries, yeah. which involved such concepts as the divine right of kings, yeah. you know, where you have this ruler or the, even this ruling class that it has this divine right to lord it over everyone else, and yeah. God gives them this power. Yeah. And in America, the whole idea was to look at this this practice of doing it and saying, "No, no, wrong. We're, everybody's equal here, okay? And we're not gonna we're not gonna have any sort of a reference to supernatural authority. We, the people, are the ones who are trying to form this more perfect union. Yeah, you know, so and that, and it's just it's that. so insane to me. It just, it just really chaps my butt when I hear them say, <laughs> "Oh, the Constitution was, is Christian." Yeah. No, yeah, yeah it's yeah. Uh. In that yeah. monument, it ha- it's not just the Ten Commandments. I mean, it has yeah. "In God We Trust" and "In God's Name We Pray." And I mean, yeah. I don't know what else on it. I haven't yeah. seen all sides. It's got the thing yeah. from the Declaration of, of Independence talking about the laws of nature and nature's God. Yeah, yeah. 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 which which is a deistic statement, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But still, yeah. Crazy. So, but you know, this is uh, you know, there's uh, for for them to claim that this is just oh, it's harmless and it doesn't hurt anyone, and this is just this is just one man trying to state his beliefs. (laughs) That's all it is. Yeah, you put put the monument on your front in your front yard. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's there's definitely a a thing going on here. But okay, Todd, well, we appreciate your input. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks, 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 All right. Uh, Julie is on too. Well, then we'll. Hey, you're on the air. Hello. Hi. Hey, I just cut in a few minutes ago and turned uh-huh. the show on. But uh, I, I was chatting with a friend of mine last night, and she started informing me of some things that were in the Bible that I was not aware of. And so I was just wondering if you guys know, like, what is a good version or whatever to try to research from? <laughs> because I want to have some really good one-liners yeah. and stuff. I mean, yeah. she was telling me stuff that, like, 
men should be sleeping with sheep and that <laughs> people should only have one set of clothing and that it is okay for men to have multiple wives in the Bible and that kind of stuff. Yeah, hmm. yeah. interesting. Missed um, the sheep thing. Uh, <laughs> I, I know. I was, that was bizarre. I but, was like, okay, are you stretching the truth on that one? Uh, <laughs> they, they have a lot of nasty stuff in there. Yeah, so it could be. Uh, you know, that, that, um, that, that, I'm sure there would be some very happy people yeah. now who will know, you know, oh, that's in there. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> Here's a uh, skeptics annotated Bible. That's that's com. one. Now that gives you the and that's the KJV and that's an yeah. and that's uh, a website that um, it, it, annotates it, it, the Bible from an unbeliever's exactly. perspective. Exactly. And it's and it's interesting. But well, here's another one though that I think is equally valid. If you just want the Bible without the annotations, is Bible uh-huh. uh, BibleGateway dot com okay. has like. Ten translations of the Bible that you can just yeah. flip through very easily on a pull-down menu, yeah. and you can you even can, see them all at the same time. Because yeah. a game that believers will play, yeah. okay, it's the musical translations game, mm-hmm. where I brought up the whole thing. I, I, I brought up the. Uh, I was in uh, in a in a like a chat forum, a message board yeah. deal, arguing with some guys. I just I was in a funny mood that night and thought, you know, just felt like a nice slugfest. <laughs> and there was, uh, you know, the one one you know Christian made the claim that you know God doesn't make anything evil, <clears throat> and I and I gave him the quote from uh, Isaiah, uh, same one where it says, you know, I I uh, I'll, I'll look it up here and say I believe it's uh, Isaiah seven, but uh, where you know where it, it, God is quoted as saying, you know, I create evil. And yeah. just flat out. And I'm like, oh, well, that's interesting, so please explain this. And he says, oh, no, 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 you should know what the Bible says before, uh, you know, you start uh, quoting it. Uh, what it really says is, I create woe. And I, uh, and I, and I said, no. <laughs> he said, you're playing musical translations. Okay, because I, I just went to Bible Gateway, right? And I picked five mm-hmm. translations at random. Yeah. Okay, and three of the translations... You know, translated that, that that particular word as evil. There was another one that said something like despair. Another one said something like calamity. None of which are really good words, yeah. right? But again, it's sort of like, all right, you know, five translations at random that I picked, and three of the five are saying evil. So you know, they'll they'll so musical translations is is one game that they will play. Yeah. And thou uh, shalt not kill versus thou shalt not th- murder. Thou shalt not murder. So. Yeah. So it's um, no, I, I'm wrong. It's it's further back. Uh, so it's. I would say the uh, Skeptics Annotated Bible is a fun one, because um, uh, they they also they itemize things by list too. You yeah. know, they'll have like inconsistencies, you know, yeah. cruelty to animals or what you know. And they'll yeah. go down and they'll they'll pick exactly. up exactly each verses. phrase. They'll have all these little icons yeah. next to it to show yeah. you know this is bad against women and it's yeah. you know and it's incompatible with this verse you know yeah. in another right. book. So. And, and and it's really worthwhile when you can come up with like a really good obvious inconsistency. Like you'll get a chapter in the go- uh, a passage in the Gospels that will say that you know no man has ever seen God, yeah. and then you can go that reference that back to us uh, uh, in Exodus. Where Moses is talking to God face to face as yeah. a man talks unto his friend, blah blah blah. Yeah. So it's um, it's uh, actually what I had done yeah. um, a couple like, a couple of years back. Actually, I'd, I made I'm these little business card type things where you print it out, mm-hmm. um, and basically I just had God be praised on it. And the front and the back was just nothing but Bible quotes in terms of Isaiah three twenty six and mm-hmm. Kings two twenty three and twenty four, and it was just nothing but a list of quotes, probably about forty of them or so. Mm-hmm. And uh, they basically all point to you know God smote the city of thirty thousand, and He was pleased with Himself, and you know all these nasty mm-hmm. things in there. Yeah, um, I say I say yeah, go on, you know, I would say check out BibleGateway.com because that's you know like ten different versions of the Bible, and yeah. you can shop and compare. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, it just Look stuff up when uh, you know she says that there's things in there, and then it always helps to read the whole chapter too. Yeah. They'll, right. they'll do they'll do quote yeah. mining when they, when they give you a single line, on. then just read that chapter, which yeah. is usually only a page or two. Yeah. But of course, Skeptics so. Annotated Bible is also very handy in that regard because they'll say, well, you know, such and such, you know, uh, yeah. verse such and such will say this, and then if you look that up in Skeptics Annotated Bible, and it has a funky little icon next to it saying something like inconsistency you yeah. can go and you can find the actual verse yeah. that It'll contradicts right that verse the other so someone's they, already basically done some of the research then and kind of made the connection yeah yeah, yeah and it's all yeah. it's all you know uh, and it's an ongoing process you know they're they're constantly revising it and changing it and they you know i'm sure people email them in and there's lots of criticisms and, and back and forth and darn it i just can't find this verse so i'll have to find <laughs> but it's in here i, I know it's in but uh, yeah it's, the bible it's, gateway it's now yeah i bible.com yeah so it's late in uh, it's in the back of it's in one of the later chapters in Isaiah. You know, where he says, like, you know, I, uh, you know, I, it's part of God basically talking about everything he does. 
Mm-hmm. And one of those things is, you know, I, I uh, you know, create evil. And it was like, that's puzzling. Okay, so uh, there, <laughs> there you go. Um, All righty. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Take Thank care you. and good luck with your Thank friends. You. Going. Okay. Uh, David is on three. He's been holding very patiently while I was... Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to get sidetracked there, but then, you know, it came to mind, and I just suddenly got this wild hair. It's like, oh, no, now i got to find it, damn it. So I'll find it later. It's around. Okay. Hey, thanks for holding. Uh, hey, guys. How y'all doing? We're having fun. Hey, uh, you want to talk about inconsistencies in the Bible. Really, uh, if you look at it, when they came out of Egypt, mm-hmm. and they wander for 40 years or what have you, until uh, mm-hmm. everybody's dead, uh, you know, until that generation that witnessed everything passed away, strangely mm-hmm. enough. But uh, which is real good for if you're out to brainwash a population. Yeah. But uh, and, keep and, them and, isolated in the desert for forty years is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, because the people that actually witnessed coming out of Egypt, they didn't believe a lot of them, mm-hmm. and that's why they got cursed to die before they could go into the so-called promised land. Mm. Well, uh, if you're looking for an inconsistency, look right there when they go into the promised land. Right, they already had the Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm. And which say don't murder and don't steal, and then what does God tell them to do? Go murder these people and yeah. steal their land. Yeah. Then we move yeah. into uh, yeah the uh, yeah God can overrule anything. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, well, it gets yeah. really down to what is God? Because since you don't believe a God is poof out of nowhere and shows up and vanishes mm-hmm. into nowhere, you know what is this God that everybody's saying is there that Moses witnesses to and talks to in per- person, and he comes down and tells the people that God said this, God said that. Yeah. You know, God really looks like he's probably like some priest or something that came out of Egypt. Yeah. And they were they were actually enslaving these people with a religion and a belief, and that's why everybody had to die off, because everybody that truly witnessed what happened, they couldn't be around to refute what was going on later. Yeah. And, 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 you know, if you really look at it in a practical way, that's really the only logical solution you can come to. Yeah, that's, that's, inter- that's an interesting way to look at it. I also think it's very interesting, you know, the, just the spectacle of, a, I'm going to go up on the mountain and talk to God now, yeah. and, then you, <laughs> and then you come down, you guys wait here, and and then he comes down like you know the the next day or something. He's got these two slabs, uh, you know. God, the next day, I think it took him quite a while. Yeah, it was a while, and then he dusts off his hands. Oh, God carved these for me. <laughs> yeah, so, so like, uh, yeah, that's where they came from. It's sort of like uh, you know the Virgin Mary. You know, so like you know Joseph you know, suddenly finds out that his wife is pregnant, and it's like I didn't do it. Oh. Uh, honey, it was oh. God. That's it. Yeah. Now, that took a lot of faith from Joseph, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Boy, what a rube. What, what I was going to say, what I initially called up was yeah. to talk about America and the founding of America. And the, sure. and the founders were really Masons. If you if you want to get down to it and look at their... That's true. There was, yeah. They were Masons. And if you mm-hmm. look at the Mason Creed, the Masons don't really take the Bible literally. Mm-hmm. They say it's all symbolic. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's why they'll take people from any religion into the yeah. Masons because you're not acknowledging, you know, the uh, the deity or, or whatever in the Bible. What you're really doing is you're just saying this is all symbolic. Mm-hmm. Uh, humanism is really what what the Masonic order is about. It's about doing good deeds yeah, I, I for think, one another. I, but I think that there is. I mean, it's not it's it's not specifically Christian. I, I think that there is some sort of it's Protestant. So, in, you know, there, there's a metaphysical aspect, as I understand it, to at least there was to to Masonic like initiation and what have you. I mean, no, they're, they're cloaked in all this symbolism, which to yeah. the outsider would give the impression that they do believe it, but, yeah. but they cloak themselves in it, but they really don't believe the symbolism. Yeah. I mean, the, the purpose of the Masons wasn't to be specifically religious. No, it was actually. It was, yeah, it was like a secret club of guys who could help each other in business and politics and what have you. That's exactly right. That's yeah. exactly what it was. It was a very practical order of people doing real works in the world to do good deeds to one another was the idea that you're doing good deeds for society and upon this we'll sure. build the kingdom. But you, and you didn't but you didn't have to be Christian to be part of the club. No, absolutely couldn't, not. Couldn't have heard. Fact, if you if you go back to you know the the popes from mm-hmm. the Catholic Church spoke out against the Masons. Mm. Uh, they were routinely speaking out against them and condemned them. Yeah. Because they were made up mainly of the Protestants who basically said you're not the vicar of Christ. Yeah. You know, and, and they didn't buy into all that, that yeah. the Pope somehow had infallible knowledge from God that he could bestow upon the, you sure. know, the ignorant humanity. Sure. But uh, yeah. I really think today, if you really look at the Bible and the way it's been uh, proliferated throughout our country and all the Western world and this whole King James Version of the Bible, I think mm-hmm. really, in my opinion, and I've done a lot of thinking about it, but I don't really have anything to base it on, but I really think that... Uh, that the same group that started the Jews are the same ones really that that really created the Christians 
Yeah. And this isn't some God popping out of nowhere creating anything. This is real people on the earth, and there are royal families behind all this. Yeah. Yeah. And they're well, the ones that are the center of power. And if you really well, look at the religion that's in the well, Old Testament, I mean, we, the Egyptian religion yeah. rehashed. Well, there's there's like a lot of, I think there's, you know, there's similarities to the worship of Isis. Uh, there's Mithra, you know, there's similarities. You, but I think it's it's certainly accurate to say that whatever religious, when religious traditions pop up, they always tend to be sort of evolutions from preceding yeah. religious traditions that people are either dissatisfied with or they, they don't think that's the best one or they think that the, the existing religious tradition has gone the wrong way. And so they will just form their own offshoot. And to what extent, uh, you know, the early Judaism, which, you know, which gave rise to Christianity, of course, whatever that was influenced. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure Judaism and, you know, the, the original founding fathers, if you will, of Judaism took their inspirations from, you know, many existing religious traditions at the time, but they adapted them to their own needs, the own needs in their society. And, and I was reading, uh, I was reading the Bible unearthed. Interesting book, or it's like taking an archaeological approach to a lot of the Old Test, specifically to the Old Testament. And what you tend to find is that when religious writings finally get set down, especially in ancient civilizations, they start out as oral traditions, right? Yeah. And they get handed down. Usually you finally find out that these things, when these things finally get written down and they get codified, it always tends to take place at a specific point in the development of a civilization. And that is when you've got a group of people that are geographically located, you know, in such yeah. a way as to, okay, like, we're the Jews and we're here, okay, yeah. like on, you know, in Canaan and what have you. And it, and, and now it's time to sort of develop our identity. Let, let's, yeah. let's create the, our, our national, our, our ethnic, what have you, identity that separates us from these guys and those guys and those guys yeah. and, and gives us a thing to feel united to. And gives us, you know, our empowerment and what have you. That's usually when you see, you know, religions start taking definite, tangible form. And and with the earliest, uh, you know, I, what became the Torah, you know, and the Pentateuch, right? I mean, this started really getting set down on paper around the seventh century of BCE, and then everything. But you know, they were oral traditions before that. And where were the oral? Did they did those oral traditions just poof out of nowhere? Like, you said, oh, no, of course not. I'm sure they came from preceding traditions. So you're quite right. Actually, the Bible testifies to where they came from because it mm. says Moses was well versed in the Egyptian ways. Mm. Yeah. See, Moses yeah. was actually educated in the Egyptian religions and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I think he served the actual priesthood in Egypt, which I think came out of Egypt. But uh, I, you know, I guess the what I'm going to close on is. Even though the Bible, I don't think, popped out of nowhere, and it's not, you know, the great creator of the universe that gave us this book, the book is here, and the ones who want you to read that book and believe it are here also. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is they're actually bringing about that whole end time prophecy that they foretold 2,000 plus years ago. Yeah, they're sure that, hot that on When that they one. came into their kingdom, this is how you would know, mm -hmm. because this scenario is going to unfold before your eyes. And and really, if you read that, it's, it's heinous. It's ugly. I mean, yeah, it's, it's yeah. like plagues and diseases and wars and yeah. everything ugly that they're unfolding yeah. on us. And so, I think people need to wake up and yeah. realize God didn't poof out of nowhere. There, These are people manipulating the way they're thinking. There is something uniquely creepy about a bunch of people who look at the prospect of the end of the world as this party you can't wait to get to. Yeah. You know? I mean, there's just something about that that is really, really creepy. Yeah. And you're right. I mean, there are, you know, there there are certain folks. To to what extent this forms American foreign policy? But you know, there are people whose opinions as to why we need to continue to unilaterally, for example, support Israel yeah. in the Middle East peace process, is because of not because of practical, you know, like real world what this is happening right now, political concerns, but because of oh no, in the Bible, in the Book of Revelation, it says da 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 da. Yeah. That's their reasoning that they're yeah. giving. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there there are folks out there who are these apocal apocalypticists. Yeah, trying to bring about yeah. the end times. And so you're right. We so. do. You're absolutely right. We need to keep an eye on that business for sure. But listen, we're out of time, David. So we appreciate your call. Okay. Have a good one, guys. Take Thanks care. Thanks for calling. Um, I want to say the late remaining two callers who are on the line. Uh, I am very sorry. We are fresh out of time and we're not going to be able to get to you. But I'm sure your input uh, it was was. Every we had a, a ton of great callers today. Yeah. Interestingly. No big defenders of Roy and his monument yeah. and theocracy. Doesn't mean you're not out there, but, uh, yeah. you know, uh, so yeah. if, uh, you know, the folks who, uh, the folks who, uh, think that this is wrong for a man to use the power of his office to promote to his beliefs over others, 
You know, we're the ones who need to be speaking out and doing stuff. TV at atheist-community.org is the email address uh, to send us uh, a viewer feedback. We'll answer you. If it's a really good letter, we'll answer you on the air. We'll be back next Sunday, 4.30, as always. And reruns of this show play on this channel on Tuesdays at 4.30. Uh, so if you miss an episode and you want to catch up, uh, that's how to do it. Um, so otherwise, let's see. Uh, anything you want to sign off with, Ash? Nope. Just keep an eye out uh, yeah. for the party this The star party. Friday. Yeah. yeah. Well, star that's, party this weekend. That's and like I say, if you go out at night about 10, 11 o'clock, Mars, right? It's a big red dot in the sky. Yeah. So, go wave at the big face. Mars. <laughs> yes. So, uh, all right, everybody. Remember, uh, it's, uh, America is the land of the free. It's not a theocracy. And in the land of the free, people stand up for that freedom. So stand up for yours. Theists, we, we don't hate you. you. We just, just think, think you're wrong. wrong. Everybody Take care. Have a good weekend. Yes. We're going to say for you. Or, well, what's left of it, at least. Okay. Bye bye. Enjoy the rest of the week. Da da da. Closing music. <laughs>